thank you very much for staying with us. In recent years, more people have begun seeking alternatives to white-collar jobs by learning skills and becoming entrepreneurs. And one industry that strived from this has been the Nigerian creative sector. Reports have it that Nigeria's creative industry is positioned as the second largest employer with the potential to produce 2.7 million new jobs by the year 2025. But some stakeholders in the creative economy believe there is need for more investment in the sector to fully harness and maximize its potential for economic growth. We have joining us in the studio now a seasoned professional in broadcast media. She's also an expert in culture, tourism, information, and social development. She was a director, the director general of the Nigeria Tourism Development Corporation. We're talking about uh, Omotayo Omotosho, an honorary of the federal government. In fact, she bags the enviable title of the member of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Omotayo Omotosho, it's good to have you Say in the it. flesh with us, <laughs> Madam Tourism herself. Thank you, my dear. Good to see you. <clears throat> good to see good you. Good to see you, gentlemen. You, Welcome. Thank right. We, we have our work cut out for us during the time that we've been given for this interview, but I, I, I want to begin on a personal note because y you have bagged so many feathers in the course of your illustrious career, and it's gratifying that you are still, you know, in the business. Alive and well. Alive and well. Like and uh, Yes, this, this, this is awesome and heartwarming. But, um, you know, many people would have been would probably, I don't know whether you've been familiar with the question, where have you been? What have you been up to? Yes, you headed the um, NTDA, that, N NTDC, DC. right? But, you know, since then, take us through what you've been doing, especially with your, um, your toga as Madam Tourism. What have you been doing to project, um, you know, the industry of tourism further after your work as the Director General? Thank you so much. Yes, um, it's amazing you're asking this question uh, because a um, um, few weeks ago, a gentleman saw me uh, on the plane and said, I'm at a tourism. It's a safe when you left NTDC. You left with everything about tourism. We don't hear about tourism anymore these days. What's going on? And I said, well, what we lack is continuity. When he said it, I was a bit disturbed. I said, what we lack is continuity. One cannot be in a position for life. <laughs> I was eager to leave because I knew that my tenure was ending. And I had a pedestal I was coming from as a television broadcaster. And I love broadcasting, even as a freelance broadcaster. So I said, I finished my tenure. I handed over to some other people. But unfortunately, we noticed that all the projects we did at that time, a lot of them did not continue with it. And it's so sad. Because government is a continuum. Mm -hmm. Because it's a continuum, you finish your tenure, you hand it over to somebody else, the other person continues with it, especially programs that sold Nigerian tourism to the world. Because mm -hmm. I remember when God even gave us the Miss World Beauty pageant to win. In your tenure, right. During my tenure. And everywhere I went, it was tourism, tourism, tourism. And people were thinking, oh, they're funding the sector, not knowing that we're thinking outside the box. We partnered with the private sector because that was the time government was coming from a paria state to democracy. So they didn't have enough money. They said the military had squandered all the money before the handover. So they didn't have enough money. So the head of state or president at that time and every other person said, let us prioritize. So priority then was education, health, agriculture, information technology. It was that time that telecom, yeah. now you have the cell phone, I have yeah. a cell phone. It was that time, early 2000. So that was priority. Tourism, culture, uh, what do you call it? All other sectors aside of the five I mentioned were not well funded because the government of the day said, let's prioritize. They will be well funded after a second term. But this one, let's face it. So I said I couldn't fold my arms and be telling Nigerians I couldn't perform because there's no fun. So we started thinking outside the box and we did a lot. So when they now tell me that, oh, they don't hear about tourism, you know, uh, what's going on? I tell them, wait a minute. By God's grace, we have a president that gets it today. Mm -hmm. We have a president that knows what tourism is all about. Because while I was in tourism as DG, we did a lot of work with Lagos State Government. We were coming with our own operatives, trained some of the staff of the Lagos State, Waterfront and Tourism, 
Development Corporation. That's what they call it at that time. So we assisted them in capi human capital development. We assisted them to produce one spectacular tourism product that will market not just Lagos State, but Nigeria to the world. And that was the Black Heritage Festival. Ah. And that's when I got to know that Governor Bola Tinubu at that time, now President Bola Tinubu, gets it. We were able to achieve so much because he had his handle on the plow and he wasn't looking back. So it was easy for us to achieve. And we went from Lagos State to Cross River, Governor Donald Duke. We did a lot with Cross River State Government to remember the uh, uh, Obudu Tourist Strategy. You remember the tourism circuit, as we call it. All facets of tourism. We could have it in some of the pockets of our states. So we went to the six geopolitical zones. What we see today is lack of continuity, but that's why I said I'm glad that came May 29th, 2023, God gave us a president that gets it, mm. a president that is tourism sensitive. And I must commend TVC because it was the, it was the support, it was a voice that you lent to us. I'd been here three, four times before the elections crying and letting everybody know that the new president and the new government must ensure that information, tourism, culture, arts shouldn't be together anymore. It should be splitted mm -hmm. so that we can know who to take uh, as uh, responsible for specific for facets, down. exactly, of the creative arts. We advocated for it. TVC accentuated it for us. So I wasn't surprised when the president got in and he decided to have Ministry for Tourism on its own. Ministry for Creative Arts on its own, Ministry of Information and National Orientation on its own. What we need now is synergy. Oh. There must be synergy. To go back to the other side of your question, what have I been doing? <laughs> what have I been doing? It's interesting because a lot of people ask me that because they don't see me so much on television talking about tourism, tourism like before. Mm -hmm. First, I'm a trainer. I ensure that I train a lot of people on effective communication. Effective communication, emotional intelligence, spoken words, phonetics, the ethics of broadcasting. I do that. And it's not just for the staff of television stations. It would interest you that senior government officials in big government institutions are interested in being able to communicate confidently and the way the English lady or the Englishman will talk English and yet still talk the way Nigerian person will talk Nigerian languages. So I'm into HR, human capital development, in that field. I also still do tourism, but from the private sector, working with some of our tour operators, they also need to be trained. Right. When our visitors come, do we have enough tour operators to uh -huh. take them around? Uh -huh. You can't even let that go. You totally. can't even let that pass. It's, it's, it's <laughs> a massive one. And, and I like right. the way you, I mean, dealt with that question, Look, talking about uh, all the aspects. You touched on the fact that the current administration has been smart enough to split up the ministries so that um, they could be further and an, an nest. And, of course, Nigerians can get the better out of them. But let's talk about the development that happened during the week, the uh, Lagos Film City. I know as uh, the Director General of the NTDC back in the days, you also canvassed uh, for filmmaking as an opportunity to show Nigeria's culture to the world. What do you think, what do you make of that um, investment, $100 million Lagos Film City that will help filmmakers get all the access to uh, locations and sites to make great movies? And what do you think about Nigeria's creative industry <laughs> so far? In recent years, we've seen some massive, massive uh, improvements and milestones been achieved with our movies now streaming on global uh, movie streaming websites. How proud does this make you feel? And what would you say is the next level for Nigeria Thank in you. terms of creative hearts? Thank you. Uh, to first go to the first part of your question, uh, what's my take on the Lagos Film City? I am excited. I'm excited and I'm not, not surprised that uh, Governor Sonwolu is doing this. He's so passionate about tourism. Mm. I had him on my TV show just a few months to the elections for him to become a governor. And I didn't spare him about his plan for tourism, culture, and <laughs> arts. That was actually my very first question. Absolutely. And he talked so passionately about it and said, oh, don't worry, ma'am. 
you get to see what we're going to do because we know that this is a revenue generating sector. Absolutely. We cannot Absolutely. be saying that we want to generate revenue and expect doles from the national government from Abuja when we have the potentials in Lagos. He talked so passionately and I knew he was going to do something. So I'm not so surprised at all that he's taking the bull by the horn. The Lagos Film City is what we should have gotten many years ago because we are so talented with very, very proficient, mm -hmm. resourceful, dynamic film producers that will carry the flag of Nigeria amidst committee of nations and make us proud as Nigerian. But they have problem of location filming. Mm -hmm. Some of them even come to my house mm -hmm. because I'm, I'm like a mother to them. They know me, they visit me. And the time they will come, say, oh, mom, you have a beautiful place. This is lovely. Do you mind we come record here? We come shoot some shoot. scenes here. <laughs> <laughs> we come shoot some scenes here. I said, oh, I'm married. Oh, let me take permission <laughs> from my husband. Right. Luckily, when we're talking, daddy came in, my husband. And I said, my husband, listen to what Sheikh Marize is saying. Uh -huh. And listen to what Bimbola Kintola is saying. And daddy said, what? And they said, oh, no problem at all. No problem. But where do we go? <laughs> that was my own question. And daddy said, don't worry. We have two floors. The grand floor, we can leave for you. Is that enough? They said, oh, more than enough, sir. More than enough. Just leave us the grand floor. You can go with you and mommy. And the children go top floor. Mm -hmm. And that's what we did. Mm -hmm. And we felt so proud that we are supporting them and contributing to the what growth the, of the industry. Exactly. Absolutely. And it's not the Omoto shows alone. Mm -hmm. I know some other right. families are doing that. When you look at most of the movies, at the credit, the end credit, you will see, thank you to, when you see those names, mm -hmm. be sure that those are the ones that absolutely, help. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> so but should a, that be the norm? I, I, I know that, you know, Emmanuel asked you, you know, uh, you know so many questions, but allow me to butt in. <laughs> he did, three in one. I, I ask, allow, allow me to butt in, and I, I know we'll still we'll address all those that. concerns, but should that be the norm, really? Because, no. yes, we see in the credit lines of many Nigerian movies, we see so many names special thanks to, to this. To, to this. Mm -hmm. But then when you compare that with what happens in yeah, other climates or economy. more advanced countries, that special thanks column, mm -hmm. it still comes to the question of, you know, a film's village. Mm -hmm. But, you know, help us to also address that, that. that bit and how the creation of a film's village, uh, village will correct that. Uh, that issue. Thank you. Um, I, I must say that the creative industry, looking at the film scenario now, has evolved. Um, yes, it shouldn't be a numb, and that's why I'm happy that we have some state government that believe in this, that they're investing in this in partnership with the private sector. For example, what Governor Tongwolu is doing. Um, the more we get state governors to do this, the problem is most of the governors have left all the wahala, all the hard work, all the, how would I put it now, uh, actualiz actualization of the policies to the federal government. Mm. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. We touched we touch on that briefly before you came on set. I mean, when we talk about the security aspect. So please carry on. Okay, it shouldn't <laughs> be. Each state is blessed with the enormous potentials. Our songs, our rhymes, our rhythms, our poetry, spoken and unspoken, our culture, our fashion, our dances, just name it. All these are elements of the creative arts not even to talk of tourism sites that God has blessed us with, which most of them are drawn down over the years. So each state governor must take the bull by the hand. It's good what Bolat, uh, I want to say Bolat is, so is at the Pabajide federal so now. Wolu, right. What Bajide right. Sawolu so is doing. I want other state governments to take a cue from this. We've always said, said it, we Lagosians, that when Lagos sniffs or coughs, all other, all other states the shake. Cold, right. <laughs> they catch the cold. Yes. They should catch the cold now. This is a positive cold, mm -hmm. right. and it should be caught. We don't need just a film village in Lagos alone. We need the film villages in at least the six geopolitical zones of the Federation. I know there's, there's something also coming up in Cross River. Yeah. I mean, there's something about Tinapa Film City or something that is very... Yeah. But of course, let's talk about the other aspect of the question uh, that we talk about um, the, the, the Nigerian movie industry and the, the exploits they've been making. How impressed are you and um, what do you think is the next level? Well, we've seen some, I know you've watched some of the movies from Jagu Jagu to, you know, all the likes that are trending. Likes. And uh, I mean, 
it makes you us proud as Nigerians to see our movies do so well. It, but of it, it course, sure does. there's still a lot of things to be done. Yeah, it, it sure does. I think what we need to do, and I'm happy that we have a president that is a visionary, mm. and he knows what we need to do in relation to tourism, culture, and art. He understands it. The ones he doesn't understand, he has a way of communicating with us to say, what do we do? How do we do this? So we wouldn't have any problem. I want to allay the fears of Nigerians on the sector because we're all so interested in mm -hmm. the sector. So I'm not surprised you're asking questions on this. This now takes me to the fact that answering your question, we look at the sector holistically and we see that we must deliberately, we must consciously every day decide that we want to protect the sector. We must have a master plan. We must know what we want to do in the next two years. And we want to know where we should have gotten in the next five years and 10 years. There must be synergy. I said it a few days ago, mm -hmm. some time ago. If there is no synergy and no deliberate effort to project the sector, now we're talking of film industry and every other mm -hmm. that dovetail into the creative arts, I've just mentioned all the components mm -hmm. of creative arts. If we don't do it deliberately, then we're wasting our time. Whoever is Minister of Tourism, I expect her to work pari pursu on a daily basis closely with the Minister in charge of creative arts and culture, mm -hmm. because they go together. Mm -hmm. Whoever is in charge of information and national orientation cannot work in isolation. He must work with tourism, culture, creative arts, so that their job, their commitment, their hard work can show. If you want to do it all alone by yourself, you're wasting your time because it's a network. In the developed economies, the network with one another. They're on their own, but the network, there's a synergy. And that's why I talked about the need for presidential council on tourism. Because all this component, even the creative arts, they're elements of tourism. And because there are elements of tourism, we must have a presidential council. It's not just the government officials alone that has work to do, even the private sector. And so I expect whoever is in charge of hospitalities, our hospitality entrepreneurs must be part of, the, of this ICT. Hotels, um, our, our uh, what do you call it, uh, arts and artifacts, mm -hmm. they must be part and parcel. With this synergy, we will get the boost that we so desire. Now, going back to your question and rounding up in a few seconds before another question is posted at me, is the fact that see what Tiwa Savage did during the coronation of Prince Charles, now King mm, Charles. Mm, mm. I felt so in proud. In the United Kingdom. Yeah, in the United Kingdom. I felt so proud of being a Nigerian. That's a Nigerian flying high the flag of Nigeria. We have a lot of musical artists. But by God's grace, they chose her. And she's a beautiful, lovely, well-behaved ambassador of Nigeria. And she sang the song and everybody went, wow. And she was something very, very decent. Not the ones we see some of our artists wearing now. And you see half of their body naked, the dress they cannot bend, the cleavage there, and all that they think that is a style. No, we shouldn't borrow the uh, entirety. Mm. of the Englishman. We should promote our own culture. Absolutely. You want to go perform in an international fiesta? For goodness sake, wear Ankara or Adire. Mm -hmm. Things made project, in Nigeria. Project your Proje culture. Project, project your culture. And, project and, your and you are a proud ambassador as, as we've, seen you. We've, we've seen you over the years. <laughs> how you do it. I mean, I, I had to steal glances at, at you now while speaking and you know, looking at you know, how your colors are just... Radiating Popping. brightly, mm. popping, and that's the, that's the word. And you know that's what, darling, word. I bought all this in Abe Okuta, mm. right. in Nigeria. The bead, right. the Ashoke. Especially the now that even Ashoke, now we even get imitations, uh, you know, from, but, but this is, of course, raw, exactly. but, but, proudly Nigeria. And they do that in let me, too, let me, let me have your State. take on how the social media has actually drawn attention to Nigeria's culture. Okay. I mean, you could go on social media now and see how Nigeria's culture is gaining a lot of attention. What can we do to ensure that the best of what we have is what the world is seeing, are taking advantage of media, digital media technology? 
Uh, you talk about um, I mean, what you did while you were in office trying to rally around uh, the, the success of the Miss World pageant. But now that the digital media is there, whatever you, when you sneeze now, the entire world can hear. What will be your charge to media entrepreneurs, uh, content creators, and culture and tourism ambassadors on how they could use social media to further project the image of the country positively, right. especially in light of the challenges that we have Thank as you. a country? Thank you. My charge to them is to be more deliberate and to be more patriotic. What do I mean? We have a lot of Nigerian fashion designers that do beautiful Brilliant works. Stuff. Mm. Beautiful works. But they tell me, I'm like their big auntie, their mom, mommy, promotion is expensive. If I want to do it on the media, be it the digital media or uh, the regular, or, exactly, the regular mm. side, I need so much money. And they go out of their way to look for sponsors. I assist them. Because most of the chief executives, the captains of industry, they're my colleagues, they're my friends. True. I'll talk to the bank chief executive, that of the insurance, that of multinationals. They are going to England to project Africa's image. Please, can you support them? Can you give them some of the tickets they need? Can you give them some of the accommodation where they're going to stay? See, Adironke Adimiluyi, Adironke Adimiluyi, the princess, right. who is now the wife of Oni. Oni of the Adironke has been doing this tenaciously for the past 10, 20 years, promoting African culture in our fabrics, in our styles, at the international front. And she would organize it, she called it, calls it um, Africa Fashion Show in England, and was wise enough to get some of the governor's wives to Around support. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Right. I'd attended one or two, and very colorful. I felt so proud being a Nigerian, sitting in the hall and seeing the glory of my country. Of, of our motherland. Right. <laughs> so, so um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I, while, you know, reading up, you know, a bit on, you know, your exploits in the past and all that, you said, as at a time when you assumed office as the DG of the NTDC, there were a lot of, you know, areas begging for your attention. And then the issue of hospitality, you were torn between diving head on into hospitality, but, you know, you were advised that the Caribbeans, that was their their forte, so to speak. But, you know, years down the line, Dubai has come into the, into, the, into, into the picture. Many of us, everybody wants to go to Dubai for so many reasons, tourism and the likes. How can we, you know, draw needed lessons, you know, from, from that and make our own country uh, the hub? Of course, you could talk about security and, and all the like, but what are your thoughts on how Dubai has risen to its enviable status and how Nigeria can... Uh, grow right in, in this regard. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Dubai had been able to reach that status because they worked out a carefully drawn policy direction and implemented them. We have a policy direction. We have a master plan for tourism development that we did together with the World Tourism Organization when I was there. I didn't want tourism to be done haphazardly. And it took me to Spain about two, three, three times. Yeah. The fourth time they were calling me, I said they should come to my country. And they came. And see things for themselves. Exactly. Yeah. And they came. Why should I be the one doing the doggy dog? You should come. I'm a proud Nigerian. I've done my own. I've been there. We've had meetings and all that. Come and see practically what we are doing. And they came. And eventually we came out with a master plan on tourism for Nigeria, guided by the World Tourism Organization, the biggest tourism regulatory authority, organization in the world. There is nothing you can achieve without working together with WTO. Because when you go for international tourism exhibitions and conferences and seminars, they will recognize you. They will think you are doing things on your own. You must work in partnership with those that have developed the economies. So we did that. So going back to Dubai, I have been to Dubai several times, and I relate with the Dubai Tourism Authority. And I realized they did a deliberate working out of the policy direction. So implementation is key. There was no way we could have implemented the dictates of the World uh, Tourism Organization uh, accredited master plan. That's what I mean, the WTO accredited master plan without synergy. And there was no way we could have implemented it effectively well 
without the information, culture, tourism, national orientation being split because they were muffled so together. We're, we're, we're getting there gradually. We're getting there gradually. So to go back to the question, in Dubai, you've traveled there, you want to check into the hotel. Now I'm taking the beat of hospitality. Right. Because I've not forgotten right. your passage of your right. I'm, a, right. I'm a broadcaster, broadcaster like you. And it shows really. <laughs> so I have this in where you were talking. Talking about that, you go to the hotel, come and see the beautiful smile the lady as a concierge mm. welcomes you with. Or the gentleman looking so smart and sharp. I'm talking of the hotels now. Hotels and hospitality, they go together. Mm -hmm. You feel welcome. You want to go back to that facility. And you even engage such a person. Oh, how are you? What's your name? And his brother says, oh, I'm Mike. How was your journey? You started a conversation. How do we to, have our I mean, own staffs I mean, right. of the hotels and hospitals? One, one, one thing is Sometimes clear. they frown. One thing is clear. But I correct them. I tell them, don't frown what at you me. Said, right. Hospitality is every Nigerian's business. It is. Because right. anyone who comes in contact with you would assume you as an ambassador of your country. And how you project yourself would form an impression about the country itself. All and right. I think that's a good way to end the conversation. All right. From your all, end. all right. No, no, no. But, but, but uh, yes, we must thank you very much. Uh, former Director General of the Nigeria Tourism Development Corporation, Omotai Omotosho MFR. Uh, we must thank you very much, you know, for your time. It's early in the morning and, and here you are, you know, coming over. This is a big honor. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank and we, we hope that uh, we'll continue to see you in you know, greater you. heights, more and more Amen. of you. Uh, you're not going anywhere anytime soon. Amen. <laughs> All right. Amen. Thanks, Bob. All right. You're still watching TVC Breakfast Saturday. There's much more.